So my name is Steve Weber. I am the Global Solutions Engineer here at Sophos for the MSP program. Uh, today, again, we're going to be really informal today. So again, feel free to uh, interrupt. Uh, if you have questions, uh, we can answer those uh, right while we're actually going through this. Uh, so we want to make this as interactive as possible if you do have uh, anything that you want to learn about uh, in addition to what we have here. What we're going to talk about is we're going to go through an XG onboarding using our light touch deployment file. We're also going to talk about how to get the XG firewall, if you have them uh, already set up in your system, into uh, central management, into the central admin firewall management. Uh, and the reason for this and the reason for uh, focusing on this is the fact that Sophos firewall manager inside of the central partner dashboard is going end of life on December of uh, this year. So at the end of December, uh, we are going to bring that end of life. So we're at about uh, four months left before that product uh, is actually uh, no longer in use. Uh, if you are using the Sophos Firewall Manager, the on-premise Firewall Manager, that will continue to be available uh, until June of uh, next year. Both of those products will still support 17.5. 18 firewalls will be able to connect to them, but you will not be able to push templates. You will not be able to do any of the other advanced features uh, on both of those tools. Again, the reason why we are pushing towards uh, you know, the central management in central admin for the XG firewall. So to get started on here, we're going to go through and we're going to take a look at the XG firewall onboarding. And this is going to be the onboarding uh, to start with using the light touch deployment. So this is called our zero touch deployment. It is not 100% zero touch as of this point yet. It will be in the future. It is something that we are working on and hopefully uh, Q1, Q2 of next year will have that available. Uh, one of the next things we're working on, which is uh, holding up some of the uh, components on there for the light touch, is the ability to have templates available for CM managed firewalls in your partner dashboard. This will essentially replace the template option that we have available uh, inside of CFM and SFM and give you the ability to bring in configurations from an XG firewall that is already configured bring those in and create them as a template into your partner dashboard. From the partner dashboard, as you deploy new firewalls, then deploy those configuration templates out to your existing XG firewalls. Uh, this will be supported for the version 18 firewalls. Uh, as of right now, uh, it's looking like it's not gonna be supported for the 17.5 firewalls. Again, it's moving forward with the new technology on there. The way this is gonna work uh, today is it's all gonna be based on a setup wizard for the XG firewall, which is going to be set up through Sophos Central Admin. So this is going to be through the customer's dashboard, not through the partner dashboard. You're going to log into your partner dashboard. You're then going to go into the customer's central admin account. And from there, you're going to go to the firewall management, and we're going to go in and actually walk through the setup process on that device. So what this is going to look like, again, starting from my Sophos Central partner dashboard, we're going to come in, we're going to select my Steve Weber personal account, and we're going to launch into the Sofo Central admin account for that customer. From here, you're going to get your dashboard for your customer. This is going to be all your endpoints, server, mobile, encryption, all those other components, and you'll see the firewall management. Every single customer will have firewall management available to them. Once we click into the firewall management, if you don't have any firewalls already existing for this customer, uh, this will give you a wall of text with an add button on there. Now that add button, we're gonna talk about a little bit here uh, in a second, uh, but that's where we're gonna to go to add the firewalls in. If you have firewalls already existing, as I do in my case, this is where you're gonna see the alerts for those firewalls uh, that will be uh, bubbled up into Sophos Central. We can see that I currently have four firewalls uh, that, is, that are joined into my central management. I've got one that is not connected uh, and one firewall that currently has health issues. So I could go into my firewalls and see what is going on. This is also going to have a consolidation of the advanced threats and the IPS attacks inside of uh, this customer's environment if anything is being reported by the XG firewall. And then just a little bit of a web activity, what's going on, how many uh, hits and what's the average usage across, you know, this is across multiple firewalls if you have multiple in your environment. Uh, this is also where you can go in, you can set up your backups for those XG firewalls. I do recommend you set your backup up and I do recommend you set a secondary backup on there as well. Uh, we'll do backups. We keep five copies of a backup on there. You can do daily, you can do weekly, you can do monthly. Uh, if you do weekly, which is what I have set up inside of my environment, that is going to give you five weeks worth of backups. 
at any point in time, you can go in and pin a backup and keep that for an extended period of time. So if you knew you're making some changes, you get your latest backup and you can then go in and pin that so we can keep that current backup. From here, we're gonna go ahead and click on the firewalls. And this is gonna bring up, again, if you don't have any firewalls in here, this is just gonna have an add firewall button. But right here is gonna give you a list of all the firewalls that you currently have available inside of your system. You can see the create a new group at the top. You can also see the add firewall. Auto refresh is set up by default. Uh, if you have multiple firewalls in here, in case, in case that I have right now, uh, you'll see that some are connected green and some that are connected gray. You can see the ones that also have those health alerts inside of my system uh, with that red exclamation point on there. Uh, and mine is just because it's last seen a month ago or last seen 11 days ago. Uh, you can also see in that green up arrow on there, which is gonna be an indication that we have a new firmware available for that firewall. Uh, firmware can be pushed out directly from this screen. It cannot be scheduled as of today, so it is a push button. It will instantly upgrade the firewall on that device. When you hit that up arrow on there, it'll give you details around what is included with that maintenance release on there or the new upgrade to the firmware. So it'll give you all the details. You don't have to go hunt that down on any of our community pages. The difference between the green and gray connected checkbox is going to be a version 17 firewall, which is going to say connected as gray. And the reason for that is because it's going to be connected, but it doesn't have all of the features available uh, that are available inside of central management for that particular firewall. 17.5 firewalls cannot be part of groups, and they can also not utilize the SOFO central firewall reporting. You can still manage the firewall. You can still single click, single sign on into the firewall, get full direct access to it without having to have any WAN ports open on the device. So please shut down all your WAN ports. No need for those to be open. Uh, we build a token. So as soon as you click on that, it actually puts a token out there for a request of management. That firewall grabs it, builds a support tunnel, which then brings you into that firewall, single sign on. Again, no need to open any WAN access. Green on there is gonna indicate that this firewall is connected and it's connected with version 18 and it is available to be added to any groups. The groups at the bottom here, which we'll go through, give you the ability to have policies set across multiple firewalls. So what that's gonna allow you to do is say we have certain web policies and app policies that need to be applied to specific firewalls. You can go in and set a group policy, in my case here, the lab group, and you can now apply those web policies and those app policies to all of the firewalls inside of that group. So if you have your main office and maybe two or three remote offices, you'll now be able to have that same policy across all of those firewalls so that it is consistent. You don't have to change that individually one-on-one. -on -one. All right, so let's get back to the onboarding here. We're gonna go in, we're gonna click on the add firewall, and this is gonna present us with a screen on here to either add a new firewall on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side, join a firewall that has already be, been configured. So we're gonna talk about the right-hand side uh, briefly. The right-hand side is not gonna actually join an existing firewall into SOFO Central. What it's gonna do is make sure that it is registered. And if it is registered with my SOFOS, it is gonna present you with instructions on how to set up synchronized security, which we are gonna cover right after this. So it does not actually present you with any sort of a code or username or password to join that firewall in. It does not automatically go out and reach out to the firewall serial number and bring it into Sophos Central. That is something we are looking for, we are looking forward to in the uh, zero touch. Again, first quarter, hopefully maybe second quarter of next year, uh, depending on you know where those get pushed out to. But that will be an option. Once you do use this option inside of there, you'll be able to have a code that'll be presented to you. You'll put that in the XG firewall and it will join it in automatically. But for today, it is set up for existing firewalls via synchronized security. And we'll discuss that right after we go through the onboard. So as far as the left side goes, for this is for brand new firewalls out of the box. Uh, they just need to be on either version 17.5.6 or higher or version 18. I definitely recommend version 18. If you have not uh, gotten uh, familiar with version 18, you haven't gone through any of the training, definitely highly recommend that inside of the partner portal. Uh, you can go to the engineer training and upgrade your current certs if you have them for 17.5 to 18 or take the new training inside of there. Once we hit the add, it is gonna ask us for the serial number of that device. Once we apply the serial number, it is gonna ask us to register that firewall. 
Now this is registering it to my Sophos. So there's a couple of things that we can do here, a couple of tricks you can do. You can actually go into your my Sophos account prior to this and pre-register the firewall to my Sophos. You will still be presented with this screen uh, and you will still have to pick an email address out of there. If you have it pre-registered against the my Sophos account that you're already using, it will not move it. It'll simply, as we select this account here, it'll attempt to go and verify that it is registered. It'll then come back saying the firewall is already registered and it'll continue on throughout the process. If you select an account inside of here, you come into your dropdowns, it'll show you your current account that you're logged into from your partner account, which is my SCPD private account at the bottom. Uh, it'll also show you any other admin accounts that are available inside of the Sofa Central admin account. So if you wanted to register it to one of those and it has not been registered, you can absolutely do that. So we'll hit register and proceed, and this will let you know that the firewall has been successfully registered. Now, this will show the account that you currently have selected inside of there. If you pre-registered it, it will still show this information, but again, it will not move the firewall. It does not have permission to do that. So it will stay in that MySofas account that you currently set it up with. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go through a configuration of the XG firewall, just like you would normally do on the device itself, but this is gonna be inside of Sophos Central. You're gonna to have to accept your license agreement. You're gonna select a name. Uh, this can either be a fully qualified domain name or just a name that you're gonna present into the firewall. On version 18, that name will be presented inside of the dashboard for version 17 firewalls. Uh, it will show just the serial number. We do give you the ability in there, and I can show you that later, on how to add a label to that particular firewall. So if you do have a fully qualified domain name, but you want to call this main office or remote office, something that makes a little more sense than the fully qualified name or the serial number, you can absolutely do that. When we get to the basic setup, this is gonna show the licensed features. Now, this is normal for a, an MSP firewall to just show the appliance base license. It should show it as active, it should show when the expiration date is for that base license, uh, which should not be uh, you know, uh, like mine is where it's uh, 2019. The MSP license on there is going to be applied later. That's actually gonna be done via your partner dashboard. You're gonna go in and select a subscription for that particular firewall. And you will not be able to do that until after the firewall is actually registered with MySophos. So at this point, we're gonna hit next. We're gonna come into our network configuration. We're gonna configure our LAN settings on there and choose the mode. Uh, the default mode is going to be uh, this firewall, which is in routed mode. You can also put it in bridge mode if that is what you're uh, desiring for your setup. We're gonna fill out the LAN address, your subnet mask, DHCP if it is needed. And then right above DHCP, you're gonna have your internet connection information. If you miss it on here, don't worry, you don't have to go back. You'll also be presented with that option at the last screen as well. So from here, we can come in, we can configure our WAN information, leave it as dynamic, we can set it as static, whatever the case may be for your environment. The next page is gonna give you the protection. So the same screen you get inside of the XG firewall, what number of protections do you want to enable for the default rule that is gonna be set up? Uh, I honestly recommend leaving these all blank. Uh, you want to make sure that the firewall is just passing traffic you can get from the LAN to WAN and then start enabling all of the additional protections on there uh, as needed for your particular environment either through the group policies uh, inside of the central admin or via a template uh, once we have that available in November. It'll then show a summary of the configuration settings that are going to be applied to the XG firewall and the last screen is going to be to download the light touch configuration file. This will also give you the option, again, if you missed it, to go in and configure those internet settings again. Download that configuration file, and you're gonna put it on a USB key. Now, this is very important. That USB key needs to not be a bootable USB key. So we don't want to have it try to boot from that actual USB key. We want it just to be a regular FAT32 formatted USB key we want the device to boot up. You need to have the WAN, LAN, USB key plugged in and then power and then boot it up. It'll see that there's a USB key attached. Once it boots up, it'll detect that there's a configuration file on there and it'll start going through the configuration process. Once that is done, you'll hit next and it'll bring you to this deploying firewall page, letting you know that you know 
the next steps that are available, plug the USB stick in. Once it gets done, now this does take anywhere from about 10 to 20 minutes for it to fully run through the configuration. Once that's done, you'll have the ability to accept services from here. Now, if you don't accept services from here, that is fine. You can hit continue uh, with, uh, without waiting, and that is gonna bring you back to this page here. Once you're back on your firewall screen where it says connected, once that firewall is ready, it'll actually give you a option on there that says pending approval. You will need to click on that and you will need to accept the services for that firewall. It'll then go ahead and take a few minutes to query all of the information from the device, the version, the IP address, model, serial number, uh, and then it'll come up as connected. Once it is in there as connected, Again, you can click on the three little dots inside of here. You can hit the drop down. There's an add label. The labels are what's in here and those little uh, dotted uh, outlines on there. So in my case at the very top, the SRW XG330, you can see the fully qualified domain name on there as well. You can also see other firewalls that just have an actual name. My version 17 firewall, as soon as I utilize a label in there, it will put only the label name. If we do not have a label, it'll just use the serial number. Last component is to actually click into that XG firewall from that dashboard. It will take a few moments. Again, uh, it will bring a patient's page up. It'll let you know that it is trying. It'll go through uh, six attempts to connect to the XG firewall, waiting for that tunnel to get established. Once it is established, it'll bring you into the firewall itself. At this point, you will need to set the admin password for that firewall. You're gonna be connecting in via single sign-on, so you will not need this password on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you ever have to access that firewall directly, you will need that password and we don't wanna leave it as admin admin. All right, Eric, Travis, any questions in there so far? So hey, far, Steve. so good, Steve. Oh, go ahead, Eric. Yeah, it just looked like there was one question about being able to manage uh, all your customer firewalls from a single pane uh, once Sophos Firewall Manager expires. Yeah, so that is something we will be working on and it's not something that is available today. The first steps of that will be released in November, uh, which will be the template management. So inside of your central partner dashboard, you'll have the ability to apply templates across all of the firewalls uh, for your customers that are attached via central management. Uh, getting into next year, uh, we will start working on a replacement dashboard. Uh, so basically we have to wait for CFM to expire. And then once we have that gone and out of the dashboard, they're gonna start to rebuild. We'll have a new screen where you'll be able to manage the firewalls directly from central partner dashboard, manage firmware, make sure the backups are up to date. That will take a little bit of time. Uh, they are building it from the ground up on there, but it is something that is high on the list. Uh, I don't think that'll make it into Q1 or Q2. Uh, we've got a lot going on with the zero touch deployment with the SD-WAN uh, configuration coming from central. Uh, I'd probably expect to see those settings probably into Q3 of next year. So as of right now, again, templates will be available from the partner dashboard, but actual management of the firewalls uh, and viewing of the status of the firewalls will be done via the central admin accounts for each customer. Cool, thanks, Steve. But yeah, that's, that's it for questions so far. Okay, perfect. So let's go into existing firewalls then. Uh, how do we get an existing firewall that's already configured into central management? And the first thing that we're gonna have to do is go into that customer's central admin, and we are going to have to create, you cannot use your central partner dashboard account to set up synchronized security. And when you go into the firewall and you hit the uh, central synchronization tab, and you were to go in and select uh, your device and put in your partner username and password, that will not work. The XG firewall cannot connect to the partner dashboard and automatically figure out which customer it belongs to. The connection for synchronized security is directly from the XG firewall to central admin. So this means that we have to create an email address that is unique for each one of your customers in central admin. Now, there are a couple of different ways uh, that you can go about this. <clears throat> so, 
first way is you can absolutely set up an alias at your organization and have uh, you know multiple aliases for each one of your customers. That way they all come to a distribution list. I know Office 365, I believe, limits that at 50. Uh, so you will be creating multiple distribution lists. Another method on there would be to have that distribution list, have that alias available and use it on this particular customer. So you would go in and create a new super admin, use that email address. Once you have synchronized security set up and running, you can then delete that user out of this account, which will again free it up to be able to use on any other central admin account out there. If you were to leave that inside of here, you were to leave that account inside of this customer's central admin, it's no longer going to be able to be used for any other account. So if you are going to go with that method of having one email address that's going to be used across the board for setting up synchronized security, uh, whether that's a, you know, an XG at your domain or a support at your domain, whatever the case may be, Sophos at your domain, just make sure that your processes are to go ahead and create that brand new user, get synchronized security set up. The last step on there is to delete that user out of central admin so that it is available for uh, use on other central admin accounts. You will also need to ensure that obviously uh, you know, more than one person is not trying to do that at the same time, uh, or that you have you know, multiple accounts for them to use. The last option that you can utilize, uh, if you absolutely want to, and you want to have make sure these accounts uh, stay in there, you can utilize a Gmail account. Uh, the reason why I'd recommend a Gmail account is they have what's basically called their uh, alias system, where you can just hit a plus. So whatever your email address name is on there, so steve at gmail.com, com it'd be steve plus customer initials at gmail.com and i don't have to let gmail know i'm doing that i can just automatically go through and create that as an alias on the fly and then have that set up as a unique email address it all comes to my same gmail account so all of the requests for creating those brand new welcome uh, customers in there creating the passwords is all done from a central location whichever method you are comfortable with absolutely works uh, so, you know, just whichever one is comfortable, you know, for your environment, just make sure you document it and make sure that everybody follows that same procedure. So again, once we have that set up inside of here, the next step is actually going to be to log into the XG firewall itself. We're going to go into the central synchronization. We're going to click on register, and that's going to ask us to fill in our email address and password. Now, this is going to, again, that central admin account, not your partner account that cannot be used inside of here. Once we have that, we're going to hit register. Oh, and that did not flip me to the correct screen. Okay, once you hit register on there, uh, it'll actually come up. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to add one more component on this. And if we actually see at the top here, and my slides are not cooperating, but you'll have your synchronized security heartbeat, your synchronized application control. Both of those will be selected by default. The next thing that you will need to do to enable the central services on there is going to be the Sophos Central Services. Turn that on, click the configure button. If you're on version 17, the only option in there will be submit backups to Sophos Central, which just gives permission. It doesn't actually send the backup. If you're on version 18, you'll have to check the management, the central reporting, which I absolutely recommend everybody takes advantage of, and the backup of permissions on there as well. At that point, you'll then come back to your Sophos Central admin account. You'll go under your firewall management and firewalls, and you will see that firewall sitting in there with that approval pending. This is that same message that you would get inside of the zero touch onboarding process with the USB key. It'd be sitting there in the pending approval. You hit the accept services on there, and it'll now go through and bring that into a connected firewall. The point of the central management, this is again, stuff that's built from the ground up. We are looking at you know, additional components to be added in over the course of time. This is set up with synchronized security and policies. You're gonna have your group management for those firewalls. Again, group management being uh, for version 18. You're also gonna have that central firewall reporting. So the group management, again, on here, giving you the ability to set up you know, production firewalls. You know, Maybe this is remote offices, maybe this is home offices, whatever the case may be, and pushing those policies to all firewalls inside of that particular group. For the central firewall reporting, uh, this is a component that will have a premium offering uh, later this year. 
but we have a free component on each and every firewall. Every firewall has the ability to have seven days worth of reporting uh, absolutely free as part of the Sophos Central admin experience. So again, that's why I highly recommend every single firewall that you connect on version 18 has that set up and checked on there to use the central firewall reporting. This is in the same dashboard. You're going to see that uh, if we go back here, and I don't think I have one that shows it. Well, I will go into a live demo. We will uh, show that on there. Uh, how to get into this. But essentially what you're gonna do is there's gonna be a little icon that looks like a report. You're gonna click on that for the particular firewall and it's gonna bring you into the reports dashboard. It's gonna show you the processes that are running, the memory of the device, any network detections, any security events. And then you'll be able to do a deep dive into the actual reports. We'll have reports such as bandwidth usage here, uh, VPN usage, Wi-Fi, email, web filtering, uh, all your log viewers and search events on there. So anything you can think of inside of there, there's a lot of detailed reports and they are still adding more reports uh, throughout the rest of the year as well. Uh, so they are not done with this as of yet. There is no ability as of right now to download these reports. That is coming. We'll have the ability to download and email those reports on a schedule. I do not have an ETA as far as when those are available. Uh, they just added in the ability to save the report. So if you have a custom report uh, set up, custom queries and filters on there, you can actually save those. It'll drop it into your mind reports. That way you can get back to the same report quickly and easily. All right, so let's jump into the XG firewall licensing. Uh, we're actually gonna jump over into the actual uh, partner dashboard for this to walk through this and we'll walk through a little bit of the uh, XG firewall on there as well before we jump into the next section. Uh, and Eric, any questions on there? Uh, no questions just yet. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're in our Sofa Central partner dashboard. Uh, what we're gonna do is talk about how do we license these XG firewalls. So there's a couple of different sections under Sophos Central Firewalls. The first one, your firewall customers, uh, this will hopefully be removed and uh, changed when we get to the end of the year. But as of right now, this doesn't provide any valuable information. So just put a mental note on there to go ahead and skip this section. The managed firewalls at the bottom, this is Sophos Central Firewall Manager. This is going away at the end of the year. So you, know, you cannot set up both options. You cannot use Sophos Central Firewall Manager and Central Management at the same time. It is one or the other. So what you're gonna be utilizing is gonna be the firewalls and firewall approvals. On the firewalls tab, you're gonna see two different uh, tabs on here, one for all firewalls. Now firewalls will not show up in here as soon as they are purchased. They do not show up in here until after the firewall is registered with my Sophos. At that point, it'll show up under the all firewalls. You can absolutely leave the firewalls under the all firewall. There's no problem with that. The only thing you're not going to be able to use is this assign firewalls button. The assign firewall button requires it to get over to the managed firewall section. Again, hopefully something we will be changing here once uh, central firewall manager goes away at the end of the year. To get them over to the managed section, you're gonna go to firewall approvals. You'll see that you have a request that is not yet sent. You'll see the serial number for that device and you'll hit request management. That'll send a management request to the registered owner, the MySophos registered owner of that firewall. You'll need to log on to that MySophos account and accept the management for that device. Now it does say accept management on there. This is something that is left over from the central firewall manager. The reason we are using it is to simply get this over to the managed firewall section, which will give you the ability to use that assigned firewalls option. You will notice on some of these firewalls that I do not have that option. That's because these are virtual firewalls as a service. We'll cover those in a minute. You can see that by based on the type here that it is monthly. If I was to come into a purchase device on here, you see I have the ability for that assigned firewalls. If you were to click into any one of these firewalls, you'll see they have the ability to go ahead and assign to. This is assigning it to a Sophos Central admin account. This is purely a visual representation of who actually owns this particular firewall or where it is deployed out to. So if you own all of yours and you're renting them out to your customers, you can see that this is, you know, in this case, the global MSP team private, and this is where those firewalls are actually deployed. Now, for adding a subscription to the firewall 
for a hardware firewall that exists inside of the environment, uh, even any virtual firewalls inside of your environment that are not part of the monthly, uh, you'll have this add firewall button inside of here. And this is gonna give you the ability to add a subscription, your Enterprise Guard, your Enterprise Guard Plus, Full Guard, and Full Guard Plus to the firewall itself. Now, there are some caveats to this. This works with XG firewalls that are non-W models. Uh, we currently have a problem with W models. So if you have a W model or you're migrating an SG firewall over to uh, SFOS, the XG firewall operating system, you will need to email MSP orders at sophos.com. Do not wait to the last minute. It does take anywhere from you know 12 to I believe 72 hours for them to go through and uh, reply to that. And that's business days. So if you do that on a Friday, uh, that will take extra time for them to go through and get those requests done. So again, don't wait till the absolute last minute till you're ready to deploy it before you get those licenses applied on your SG uh, or your SG, XGW models. For an XG, just 135, you would come in, you would select that add button, and it's gonna ask you which subscription you want to apply. You'll select the appropriate subscription and hit save. That'll put it in pending. It'll take about five minutes for it to go through and apply that license. Once it verifies that, it'll then put it under the subscription column. For Virtual firewall as a service. The way that this is going to work, if you're using Amazon, you're using Azure, uh, you're deploying to VMware, whatever the case may be, you will need to come in here first and request a virtual firewall license. We cannot take a trial license uh, for a virtual firewall and convert that into a virtual firewall as a service. The only ability for converting a trial virtual firewall will be to purchase a base license and then apply the monthly subscription. So if you know you're gonna be deploying in Azure, you know you're gonna be deploying in AWS or into a, some other on-premise virtual, come in here, request a new virtual firewall license. You're gonna select who it's going to be registered to. This is going to be the MySophos account that it is going to register it to. If you have one particular account that you use across the board, and this is gonna show all of your accounts on here, you will need to make sure that that MySophos account also has an account inside of your Sophos Central Partner dashboard. Uh, that is just your normal ad user process. You would just do it for that MySophos user inside of there and add them in as an available admin uh, from your environment. So in this case, we can select my account. You're going to select your size of the firewall. This is going to be the cores and RAM. So two cores, four gigs of RAM, four cores, six gigs of RAM. This can be changed at any point in time. So if you started at a two core, four gig, and later you decided you needed to upgrade to a four core six, you would simply select that edit option. It'll bring you right back to this screen and you can select your different option for the CPU and memory size on that device. You'll then select your subscription. Again, can be changed at any point in time. You've got your Enterprise Guard Plus. You'll then assign it to a Sophos Central customer account. Now, this is gonna be important on there if you select a particular account inside of here or you do not select a particular account, it is locked to that account. So once we select this on there, we're gonna put this to my personal account and we're gonna hit create firewall. It's gonna ask me to confirm the register and email, the size of the firewall subscription and who it's being assigned to. Again, that assigned to cannot be changed. We'll hit save. And what this will do is it'll come up and present us with a serial number for this particular device. Do not jump the gun and hit okay because you're not gonna be able to go through here unless you have you know, just very few limited firewalls and understand which one is which, which one's your brand new created firewall. So I'd recommend copying the serial number out of here. And now you can grab that serial number, you can go to your AWS, you can go to your Azure. And when you deploy out those firewalls with a BYOL license, you'll be able to apply that serial number during the XG firewall setup wizard. You'll need that serial number to go in and apply this the two core four gig license along with that subscription for the enterprise, enterprise Guard Plus on there as well. Once you're done, hit okay. And now we can go in and search for that particular firewall. And we can see that this is applied to my Steve Weber account. Now that does not mean it's gonna put it in there for central management. If I want central management, I will need to go through the synchronized security process in order to bring that firewall into CM. We can see the serial number for that device. You can see that this is monthly. It is Enterprise Guard Plus. At any point in time, I can edit that. 
I can come in and again, you'll notice here, the assigned to cannot be changed, but I can change my subscription if I need it. I can move it up to an Enterprise Guard Plus. And if we needed some more horsepower on there, I can make this a four core six. Adjusting the license on here will automatically apply that license to the actual firewall, but it will not upgrade your virtual appliance. That is still on you inside of AWS Azure or your virtual environment to shut down that firewall, change the virtual hardware on the back end, and then boot that firewall back up with the new hardware specs. If you no longer need this virtual firewall, this was a, a company that went out of business, they're no longer using the firewall, it was only a limited run, whatever the case may be, you'll find that serial number for that device, and you can now come through and delete that out of here. This is a permanent deletion. There is no way for us to recover that. So again, it will tell you right here, it is not recoverable. We will require that you confirm that you want to delete this device and then simply hit delete. That'll remove that firewall from here and you will no longer be billed for that particular device. To get into management of the firewalls, and before we do that, uh, Eric, Travis, anybody, any questions on licensing? There is a, a question here, Steve. Uh, do you have tools to help migrate an Azure account for the virtual XG? Uh, I don't know what we mean by migrate an account. If you have a trial that is set up in Azure and you're needing to move it to a virtual firewall as a service, you will need to deploy a brand new uh, firewall with Azure or AWS. You will need to apply that virtual firewall as a service subscription. You can then back up the configuration as long as all your uh, interface settings are the, exactly the same in there, back up your configuration from the existing and restore that into the current. The licensing does not uh, come with that restore. So it'll use the licensing from the virtual firewall as a service. Okay, and I misread that, I'm sorry. It's uh, do you have tools to help create an Azure account for the virtual XG, I'm not sure. Yeah, so there's that marketplace. Yeah, so creating them inside of Azure, you'll have your marketplace. You will see components for pay G, which is pay as you go. It's hourly billing directly through uh, Azure. We also have that for AWS and you will see BYOL. BYOL is what is needed if you are gonna be utilizing the virtual firewall as a service monthly subscription option, or if you're gonna be going termed one, two or three years. Uh, you'll have that same option in AWS. It's uh, actually not part of Marketplace yet, but it is part of a template that you'll go through and actually set that up. It will be a part of Marketplace, hopefully here shortly in the future. Fantastic, I think that answers it. All right, perfect. All right, so real quick here before we actually run through uh, the rest of these slides that we have, uh, getting into an XG firewall, again, I'm going to select into my account here. We're going to launch into Sophos Central Admin for this particular customer. And while that is loading. Okay, from here, we're going to come into the firewall management. And again, we're going to see all of the firewalls that I have available. Any high alerts, medium alerts, information alerts. Those are all part of the Sophos Central admin dashboard. You can see I've got one firewall that's not currently connected, but nothing with health issues. Backup options. You will need to come in and hit add. You will need to select the serial number for that device and add it in here. You can select your frequency on there. You can select the day that you're going to do that as well. And again, we will keep, in my case here, five weeks worth of backups. They are listed in here by serial number at this point in time. Uh, they're hoping to get the labels in there that you're adding to the firewall uh, there shortly. That way you can understand which firewalls with which without having to know the serial number of that device. Any point in time, you can generate a backup right now on the fly. If I was doing some of this firewall, I wanted a fire, you know, a, a backup right now. You can absolutely do that. And then you'll see these little pins on the side as well. That's where I can pin a particular backup and have that as one of my stored backup options. You can only have one stored backup at any particular given time. So if you come in here and you select that as a stored option for the 23rd, it'll let you know that it is going to replace the manually stored option on there and replace it with this one from the 23rd. And now I have that in there as my stored backup copy. If not, the oldest one will always be kicked out as the newest one is generated inside of there. From the firewall section on here, just so you can see again, gray means XGV17.5. You can see that there is an upgrade for firmware available. If we click on that, 
we can see what the firmware upgrade is for this. And it's actually version 18 is available. And we have all of the release notes that are available for that particular upgrade on there. So you know exactly what is included with this particular upgrade. If you hit upgrade firmware, it will do that right now. Uh, hopefully by the end of this quarter, uh, hopefully in the next month or so, we'll have the ability for the scheduled firmware upgrades on there as well. So we can schedule this for after hours. You don't have to do it right then and there. Same thing under my version 18 firewall. This one is running 18, it's not running MR1. I can go in and select the upgrade and see that MR1 is available for that and I can upgrade that firmware. Adding the labels, hit the three little dots on the side and you can see your edit and delete labels on there. This is also where you can come in and manage the firewall, view device reports or remove it from central if needed. You can also get to your reports by hitting on the little report icon right here. So if we come into the reports for this particular device, that'll bring you into the SOFO Central firewall reporting uh, for this particular firewall. You'll see that the name is up here. This is giving me the last 24 hours on this dashboard. It will take a few minutes for it to go through and populate all the information on there. This is gonna show you an overview of CPU interfaces, you know, VPN connection, anything that's happening inside of the environment, again, any allowed, uh, categories, any questionable uh, new cloud apps, risky apps, and you can click on any one of these and it'll populate down below. So we'll give that a moment here to finish populating. And again, this does take a few minutes uh, to go through and populate. If there is a lot of data on there, it will take a few moments to process that. Uh, me being on Zoom right now and sharing on my screen definitely doesn't help with my bandwidth situation. All right, rather than waiting on that to finish, we're gonna come into the reports section. And this is where you can come in and, yeah, got a nice little error because I switched screens. This is where we can now come into our report templates. Uh, so you can see we already have the prep in here for being able to select between different firewalls that this customer has. It's not active as of yet. Uh, again, something this is being built out and all the different reports that are available for this particular uh, firewall bandwidth report being your first report that is available for the last 24 hours. This firewall has not been on for some time, so I will not have any uh, reports available or report data for that. Uh, if I was to come in and give me the last seven days, that should actually have some report data for me and should start to generate all of that information. And you can come through once this is selected, you have your options on the side to filter out the columns that are available. So you can see source destination, uh, users on there, IP addresses where it's coming from, uh, all the information available for those particular firewalls. And obviously mine's been offline for a little more than seven days, so I do not have any reporting information available for this device. But you can decide whether or not it's gonna be bar charts, horizontal charts, pie charts, whatever makes the most effect uh, for that particular customer. Once you get this drilled down to you know, certain queries you want there, maybe you're looking for a particular country, maybe you're looking for a particular user, this will show the columns that are currently available. Again, you can add in additional columns as needed on here. Once you have that set, you can come in and save that as a template. That'll now put that in as a saved template for that, so you can quickly and easily come back and get to those reports in your environment. So definitely recommend you guys, you know, check this out, get it set up on your firewalls. It doesn't cost anything. Seven days of firewall reporting, absolutely free for those devices. Getting into any of your firewalls, if you were to want to go in and manage a firewall is simply click on the device. You'll notice the screen goes gray and you'll have a patients page on here letting you know that this could take a few seconds and that it is attempting to connect to that device. It will have six attempts to connect to the device. If the device is running slow, something's going on and on with it, the internet's slow or maybe down, and it cannot build that session in time, it will still build that session in the background. And once that is available, you can then click on it and go directly into that device. Once that session is up, you can see here, it got it on try number six. Uh, it'll come in, you'll be brought into that firewall single sign-on and you'll have direct access to that XG firewall. So at this point, I am in this XG firewall through Sophos Central. I do not have to have any WAN access enabled to this device. This looks exactly like your XG firewall because it is your XG firewall. The only difference is you'll have this back to firewall management option at the top. 
As of today, we can only manage one firewall at a time, so it does not pop into a new window. Uh, it's based on the security tokens. Again, that is something they are looking forward to uh, fixing in the future. But at this point, I can make any change that I want on this particular device. If this was part of a group, you would have a yellow bar at the top here letting you know that there are group policies applied to this firewall and that any changes you make may overwrite depending on uh, where you place them on the firewall for that particular device. All right, any questions on the firewall management components? I know we got about 15 minutes left. Yep, there was a, a couple questions to um, uh, reiterate the end of life for SFM, CFM, and iView. Steve, I've got those up here if you want me to read those off. Go for it. Okay, so Cloud Firewall Manager, which is the central management tool that's in Sophos Central Partner Dashboard today, um, is going to be end of life uh, at the very end of the year, so December 31st, 2020. Um, so plus firewall manager, which is that same tool, but the self-hosted or partner hosted version of that is going to be end of life on June 30th, 2021. Um, a couple of things to note, I think Stephen, you can back me up on this for both of those tools, although they may still be available today, they do not support the latest, um, version of the OS, SFOS. Is that correct? That is correct. So version 18 can connect to both of them, but version 18 cannot utilize templates uh, or any of the other advanced features. So essentially you're only gonna see the status updates for the particular firewall, that's it. Excellent. And iView is the, uh, the reporting tool, the attachment there. Um, end of sale on that is July 20th, uh, so it's passed. So the end of life is December 31st, 2020. Um, if you want to just give a quick Google, you can um, you can just do product lifecycle uh, or retirement uh, for Sophos, and you can just be able to find the KB on all this stuff. Um, let's see, a couple other questions. Uh, will we still be able to run SFM or iView after that time? Um, I guess I, I don't see why you couldn't, but again, yeah, not supported, I, right? I don't see why you couldn't. It's not going to be supported any longer. I don't think the and I don't have the answers on that. I don't think the licenses will go uh, full expire, but obviously anything that you're trying to do with version 18 and moving forward, once we get into 18.5 and 19, uh, will not be supported and we will not be providing any updates for uh, you know, CFM or SFM uh, in that case. Uh, iView, uh, I honestly, you know, I honestly recommend you get into version 18. Uh, you get into the central firewall management and the reporting. The reporting tool for central management is so much better than what iView uh, provides. Uh, much more granular details, much more reports that are actually useful and uh, needed from an MSP standpoint. And once we get to the premium version, uh, the premium version will allow you to go in and select uh, bundles. We're gonna have them in 25 gig blocks. So you're gonna add storage to that particular firewall and it'll be on a per firewall basis. So if you only need 25 gigs of additional storage, it'll calculate out based on what's currently uh, in that firewall of how much time, how many days of reporting that you will get out. Now it is just a rough calculation on there, but it will give you a chart so that you can see you know, exactly how much space is currently being used on that particular device. And actually I can pop over to my screen. This is about and available for termed licensing right now. So if I come into mine, and this will be on the partner dashboard at this point in time, but it'll look similar. And I come into my firewall reporting management, you'll see all the firewalls that you have available. Now on term, you have to purchase those 100 gig uh, licenses up front, and they apply to a single firewall. So it's not collective. And I'd come through here, and in, in this case here, I have it applied to my 330 firewall, and I'm currently using 21 gigs of the 100 on there. So again, with MSP, we are gonna bring that to blocks of 25, so it makes it a little more flexible, and you'll be able to allocate, you'll come in and allocate which licenses you want to apply or how many 25 gig blocks you want to apply to this particular firewall, and it'll give you an estimated storage on there. So you can see right now with 100 gigs, with the amount of data that I'm catching on my firewall, I'm at over 365 days. So a 25 gig block, depending on how much you have in there, will probably get you 30, 60, maybe even 90 days. Again, depends really on how much reporting and how much data is being processed through the firewall. 
And Steve, what would you say would be the benefit of that over the just the regular reporting on the firewall itself? So the firewall uh, has built-in reports. Uh, they are based on iView. Uh, those reports are great, but things such as the bandwidth report, which we produced in uh, the Sofa Central reporting, uh, is not something that partners have found you know easy to find and easy to break out uh, inside of the XG firewall. iView just doesn't have uh, those types of reports uh, available. You can manipulate some of the data to see, uh, you know, a number of website accounts and hits per end user. So you. That's not going away. We we don't have any plans right now to kill the reporting out of the uh, box itself. Central firewall reporting is meant to enhance that reporting and give you much more granular detail, much more control over the reporting so you can present it to your customers. Anything else? Uh, okay. Um... Partner login, upgrade path from version 17 to 18. Is there anything to worry about there, about losing a config or anything? Uh, there is nothing to worry about. Obviously, it is software. So anytime you're upgrading software, I would recommend uh, that you have your configuration backed up before you do that. Uh, I would recommend you do that. You know, Don't do it during the middle of the day. I'd recommend you do it during a maintenance hour where the customer knows that they are going to be download, down for a period of time. Uh, the upgrade will take about 15 minutes or so to run through on uh, an XG firewall. If it's a lower end model, an 86 or a 106, uh, it may take a little bit longer. Uh, 85s and 105s are not supported for version 18 as they do not meet the minimum uh, RAM requirements. Those have two gigs of RAM and a minimum requirement is going to be four. Uh, but yeah, there is nothing to worry about. Uh, we've upgraded many firewalls successfully without any problems. But again, there may be something inside your configuration if it was brought from an SG to an XG and maybe from 15 all the way up into where it is. So always take it back of your configuration. That way you can always get back to a working state. If for some reason it does fail, uh, you can boot up the firewall directly. Uh, make sure you can attach a monitor to it and you can actually revert right back to the previous firmware that is on there. So you always have two copies of the firmware. So your XG17.5 firmware will stay on there. We'll add the new 18 firmware on there, and then we'll migrate the configuration into a new configuration file for that. So you can always go back and get into your 17.5 uh, firmware and configuration. Okay, cool. And, and rewind a little bit to that four gig requirement for version 18. What, what is that? What are the implications there? Well, so it's a requirement. So we cannot run version 18 on anything less than uh, four gigs. It, you know, it won't even allow you to install it on there. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why the 85 and 105 were replaced. It's just a requirement based on all the new features that are added into uh, the XG firewall version 18 OS, uh, which you know, we're going to go through now. The new DPI engines, our new fast path technology, a lot of cool stuff that's been added into the XG firewall, but it did make it so that we needed a larger footprint on those devices. Okay, so that means that the 85s and 105s, if those are out there, those are not able to, to be upgraded. Um, any kind of uh, backdoor hacks that we can to look at for that? Is it uh, crack the uh, the seal, open it up and add some more RAM or, or is that um, not even an option? Uh, the 85s and the 105s do not have that as an option. Uh, you're not going to be able to adjust that. It is hard set on the uh, the BIOS for those devices. Uh, obviously, it would not be supported. So if you had any problems on there and you, you know, did go through and tamper with it, uh, you lose full support on the device. So if you have an 85, you have a 105, and you're needing to uh, upgrade off of those, uh, maybe the device is not that old. You know, reach out to your uh, local team. They'd be happy to work, uh, you know, a great deal on there to make sure that, you know, you can upgrade that uh, customer and then, you know, use yeah, that exactly. hardware for whatever yeah, we, you want. We use do it for those, a lab. those kind of things. Yeah, we do those kind of things all the time on the sales side. If, you know, something, uh, um, you've got a fairly new appliance that um, isn't supporting on the, on the latest version, um, give reach out to your channel team. We'll walk you through. We'll get, uh, uh, get some quotes and, and some kind of creative deals on, on the table for you. All right, um, let's save the rest of the questions we have. We'll try to run through this as quick as possible. Uh, we are gonna go probably a little over the hour here, but wanna make it through uh, XGV18. Uh, and then just to dive into the 
uh, XG firewall rules. So I've actually got a couple slides put together for uh, how the XG firewall rules work for both inbound and outbound. Uh, there is a wizard for uh, the, out, uh, the inbound rules as well, if you can use, utilize that, but just going through that entire process. So talking about version 18, this is where, and this is part of the reasons why we have, again, a bigger footprint on there. Uh, version 18 brought a lot of new features and components uh, into the uh, XG firewall. Uh, we have this marked with our extreme. So as soon as you update this on there, it's our extreme architecture. This is a brand new DPI engine on there. This is gonna be TLS 1.3 inspection available without having to downgrade or worry about any of the uh, certificates in the middle. Obviously, anybody not using 1.3 will still need to have uh, certificates if we need to go you know, be a man in the middle for that, download the information, decrypt it, and then re-encrypt it to the end user. We also have our brand new FastPath technology in there. So once we have trusted applications, uh, trusted uh, signatures and policies through the system, instead of constantly analyzing every single ounce of data that's coming through there, uh, we can actually have that go through our fast path engine so we can bring that through at wire speed. So that's another huge advantage uh, to the XG firewall V18. So if we start talking the encrypted visibility on there, again, all ports, all applications. So this is a huge improvement. If we remember from 17.5, the only thing we can do is our decrypt and scan, which is gonna be on port 80 and 443. This is a full DPI inspection engine. Again, TLS 1.3 inspection on there. All applications, all ports uh, can be scanned and you know checked for uh, security and compliance on there. Uh, Highly, highly recommend everybody get certified on version 18 and check this feature out. A lot of the reasons why people do not use, uh, you know, the crypt and scan or SSO inspection is because it typically breaks a lot of things in their environment. With this new DPI engine on there and our fast pack technology combined with that, you don't have that same level of risk. There's still maybe websites out there, yes, that will be broken that are maybe using an older version of uh, TLS on there. Uh, if they're using a 1.0 or anything else that you know, maybe is not quite up to the standards. The reason you need to do this, you know, if we take a look at it, um, you know, 85% of all traffic you know, that people are browsing on the internet is encrypted. If you're not looking at that encrypted traffic, if you're not seeing, you know, is it you know, good information coming from, is it coming from a trusted source? That's how you're gonna be bringing those bad guys and those bad components into your environment. So we absolutely wanna be able to go through and check all of that traffic. So again, 32% of those uh, threats out there, you know, malware, potential unwanted programs, you know, they also are using TLS. So, you know, they know that, you know, getting into your system, they need to be secure uh, when entering those systems. So again, if you're not scanning for that inside of your environment, that is leaving a rather large hole. The other component on there when bringing this DPI engine in there, and another reason why people didn't, you know, typically don't want to add uh, SSL inspection to a firewall is the first complaint you get from an end user is, everything just got slow. Again, brand new DPI engine, fast pack technology. We analyze the first few packets, we understand the application that it's talking to, and then we bring it down into our fast path, which comes through at wire speeds. If you guys wanna learn more about this, if you go to our uh, YouTube channel, and maybe one of the guys can find it on there under the webinars, but we have a webinar where we discuss our new DPI engine, I go through in great depth of how the, uh, the SSL inspection is handled, the fast path technology, how that works. So if you're wanting a deeper dive into you know, how that actually works, how we're actually processing the information, you know, definitely recommend you go through and take a look at that. So again, you know, performance and making sure that you are taking a look at you know, all of the traffic coming through. On the dashboard, you'll notice that there's this new SSL uh, and TLS connection. So you can see the, uh, by default, uh, this is going to be turned on. So you can see 60% you know, of the traffic, 75% uh, you know, decrypted on there. You've got you know, your failed notices. So if you have anything that particularly has failed, you can come through and you can click on that and you can go in and fix those errors for those particular applications uh, right there on the fly from the dashboard. With the extreme architecture on there, we're also getting more into the zero day. We have a brand new component which adds on to the uh, Sophos Sandstorm. So Sophos Sandstorm was the ability to 
to take any file that's being downloaded, whether it's from email or web, analyze that file, send it up to our sandbox, detonate it inside of our environment that's secure, and then present the end user with a, you know, you're allowed to get to this file or you're not allowed to get to this file. That has been drastically updated inside of uh, the XG uh, firewall, and it's now going to be your threat intelligence center, which is also going to include uh, multiple models for your you know, AI learning, your machine learning, and static file analysis on there. You know, this is definitely important. You know, we have a lot of you know, phishing attempts going out, especially with coronavirus, you know, Excel macros, you've got your hacker toolkits out there, infected documents. You know, the bad guys know that, you know, we are all working uh, remotely away from home. So we want to make sure that, you know, we are protecting those end users as they're coming in, as they're surfing out through, uh, you know, the internet, that they are using those appropriate connections and that that traffic is being filtered. Where this is actually going to be is right on the dashboard. We're going to replace that sandstorm with the Threat Intelligence Center. You're going to see the uh, number of scanned uh, items out there, the recent incidents, uh, the total number of incidents on the dashboard as well. And then you'll actually get in and you'll see you know, kind of these mock files on there, but it'll let you know the status of those files, whether or not they're clean, malicious, you know, likely clean. It'll have a bunch of different options and variables for you. You can click on those and start to bring up the report options. So why is it being ranked this way? So again, as an admin, you have a better understanding of you know, why this particular malicious was uh, detected as malicious. You can see reputation is suspicious on there. Overall ML genetics and file attributes are marking as malicious. So overall, we said, sorry, not allowed inside of uh, the environment. The other thing that this does is it also is gonna build out a report. So this report on there, you can present to your customer and it's gonna give you a deep dive analysis on everything that happened uh, during this particular detection in this file. So all the machine learning components, so you can see the different uh, reputations at the top. It's gonna to give you the hash of that particular file, the file size, you know, what did the machine learning say about it? It's also gonna give you screenshots from our sandboxed environment. So as we executed this in our environment, you know, what did it do? What did it do on that virtual desktop? What was it trying to load? So you can quickly and easily go through and see, you know, this was trying to open up a PDF file, uh, something included inside of that, tried to reach out through a browser to download some more information. You have all of that information at your fingertips. And that's just a great report to grab that, you know, copy out that PDF. And if you have an attack that comes in and you're wanting to add that as part of a uh, report for your uh, customers at the end of the month, you can add those into there, add those reports of what was blocked. And this is why you are utilizing this. The last component on there is gonna be that uh, extreme architecture. This is that fast path technology. Again, once we have those trusted applications, uh, policies and signatures inside of there, we can actually move that from the slow path, which is let's analyze everything and make sure that it is good. It's verified good now, and let's bring it through the firewall through our fast path technology uh, at wire speed. So again, this is where you don't have that slowdown. If something changes inside of that connection, yes, we will have to re-verify and uh, you know, ensure that that is a trusted application, ensure that it is a trusted uh, stream going across, and then it goes right back into the fast path again, and ensuring that these speeds going through the XG firewall uh, are not impeded. And with things such as Salesforce, Office 365, even G Suites, those are applications that we understand and have built in under the trusted application rules from Sophos. So you'll have some rules that are constantly updated and applications that are updated via Sophos inside of the firewall. You can go in and add your own in there as well if there's particular applications that we're not covering. All right, so the last section on here, uh, this is gonna be firewall rules uh, and that rule. So this section has changed uh, drastically on the XG firewall. If we come in and take a look at this, uh, you're gonna see on there that the rules and policies for the XG firewall is no longer from the V17, just that one firewall section, which has absolutely everything. Your NAT rules and SSL inspection have now been broken out into their own individual tabs. So you have a firewall rule, that firewall rule also has to be coupled with a NAT rule. This was done to give a lot more flexibility to the firewall. 
Uh, the previous way on version 17.5 absolutely works. It is absolutely easy. Everything is in one rule, but everything being in one rule also meant we had a lot less flexibility if you wanted to do something different with the NAT translations on there. You want to do source NAT, destination NAT, you know, full NAT on the network. That was not as easy to accomplish on version 17.5. So a lot of this is mainly due to a lot of the enterprise accounts or larger accounts we have out there, but it just adds flexibility to uh, everyone. And I want to walk you through how exactly uh, this works. So we're going to focus on just the firewall rules and the NAT rules. Again, if you want to learn about SSL inspections, go into that uh, webinar that we have on our global YouTube channel. Uh, just search for Sophos MSP Global on YouTube. You'll find our channel and there'll be a section called webinars. So we're gonna take a look at outbound traffic, traffic coming from your LAN, going out to uh, the WAN. How do we build out that firewall rule? And then how do we build out that accompanying NAT rule on there as well? So if we start, we're gonna go ahead and add a firewall rule. This is gonna be my uh, test rule. This is going to be for outbound traffic at the top here. And what we're gonna to have to designate, and I know this seems pretty straightforward and easy on here, we're gonna to have to designate our source. Where is this coming from? So our source zone, our source network, and then time of day that you want this firewall rule to be used. This is actually a really cool feature that you can use for guest wireless network. So if you have a guest wireless network and they should only be able to access the internet during office hours, there should be nobody sitting there surfing the guest network after hours, go ahead and shut down that rule. You can actually put a time scheduled on a particular firewall rule. You're then gonna come in and set up your destination services on there. You'll set up your, it's going out to the WAN. We do not know what particular network it is gonna be going to, so it will be any. If you want to designate individual uh, networks that they're allowed to go to, you can absolutely do that there. I'd probably recommend doing that at the web filtering level. And then the services that are allowed to be used, you can have this as any, or you can lock these down, which is the recommended out there, lock them down to specific services that are allowed to go out to do the internet. In most cases, it's gonna be HTTP and HTTPS. The last option, and I have this in yellow at the bottom, uh, we do have this option for create a linked NAT rule. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to take the information and this only works for uh, outbound traffic. It will not work for the inbound uh, traffic because it will not be able to process that rule correctly. I don't recommend doing this because it's gonna have a lot of different linked NAT rules. You can create your NAT rule separately, which we'll show you here in a second. But this will, if it's a very basic firewall, this is the only firewall rule that's going to be in here. This will create a rule coming from the LAN going to the WAN for that home network. It'll automatically masquerade that local traffic and send it out to the internet. So again, keeping it easy, you can absolutely go through and click on that linked NAT rule. Now, coming into our last part of this, uh, if you continue to scroll down, you'll have the rest of your security features on there. This is where you still set up your web filtering. This is where you set up your synchronized security. You'll notice that web filtering and synchronized security, if those sections are not being used, they will be collapsed. If you have them enabled, they will be expanded out so that you can utilize those sections. You'll have your email content scanning on there. If this was a, a email filtering rule, you had an on-premise uh, email server. You're also gonna have your app control, your IPS, traffic shaping, all the different components on there that you would normally expect to see on the XG firewall. So, now we need to build a NAT rule for this. So we have our firewall rule that is allowing traffic to come from my home network and get out to the internet, but I don't have a NAT rule that is actually allowing this to take place. So this is gonna be, in my case, I'm gonna build a LAN to WAN rule. And you can see this is actually applying not just to that one network, but it's applying to multiple source networks inside of my environment. So I've got my different source networks of where this can come from. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go through and we're going to translate that source. So this is gonna be our masquerading rule. The next thing we're gonna do is select destination. Again, we don't know where it's gonna be going unless we have those particular uh, sites listed. And then the services. So if you use any, use any inside of here. If you're using your allowed outbound services like I am, make sure you select your allowed outbound services. This is gonna be the original service that was requested. We are not gonna change the uh, the destination on there, so that'll remain original, and we're not gonna change the uh, service on there. Again, those will remain original. The last section will be set up as any, any, and you can absolutely leave it as 
any any. Uh, from here, uh, the inbound interface you want to leave as any because it's not going to be originating from that inbound interface. So uh, leave that as any inside of the environment, but you can absolutely go through, in my case, I've got multiple internet providers, you can specify those different internet providers uh, that are going to be allowed to be used inside of the environment. So this is a very simple NAT rule on you know, getting traffic from the original network, my home network, and having that displayed out into uh, the environment. Uh, again, any questions uh, as far as net rules, guys? Do we have you guys still on? Travis, you still with us? I think we're, I think, I think we're, we're looking good. Okay, so last section on here, let's talk about uh, inbound and then uh, let you guys get back on with your uh, day here. Uh, oh, one other thing to note inside here, um, and this is again, this is where flexibility comes in. Uh, each one of these sections has these little uh, designations on there, SNAT, DNAT, and PAT on there, source NAT translation, destination NAT translation, PAT, uh, so port address translation on there. Uh, so just so you know what those actual individual components mean on there. And you'll actually see when we get into the inbound uh, service on how we utilize those. So this is a little different uh, when we come into the inbound uh, traffic. Now, if you were to click on, and I'm going to come back to here just for a moment. If you were to click on the add firewall rule, there's a drop down on there for a uh, inbound wizard. It's uh, your server rule. Uh, wizard. You can absolutely utilize that. It is going to create all the settings. It's going to ask for all the correct information in order that you need uh, to create that inbound rule. If you're wanting to do this yourself, you don't want to utilize a wizard, you can absolutely come in here into the uh, firewall rule. Uh, we're now going to go and create a test firewall rule for inbound access. So you can see that we're inbound access. Uh, I'm logging that traffic. It's accepted. We're going to select again our source. Again, where is this traffic going to be coming from? It's going to be coming from the WAN and it's going to be coming from anywhere because we don't know the exact IP of those particular networks. Uh, we can schedule a time of day, absolutely. Uh, not necessarily needed in this case. The next thing we're going to have to do is select that destination. Where is that traffic ultimately destined for? In this case, it's going to come from the WAN into the LAN. So it's gonna be coming from the WAN zone, it's gonna hit the firewall, and we're gonna translate that into the LAN zone. The next thing we're gonna do, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky uh, and probably needs a little bit of a different wording on there, it asks for a destination network. Now, this is where the traffic is going to be destined to hit. So in this case, it's gonna be hitting my port E2, which is my WAN port. And that traffic is going to come from the WAN on from any IP address, and it's going to be hitting that external port. So that port on there, which has the IP address associated to it, it's going to be hitting that traffic. So this would not be the internal network. So this would not be my home network. This is going to be the interface that the traffic coming from the source is going to hit. So again, you have your destination zone, which is going to be the ultimate destination of where that traffic is going. So it's not going to be WAN WAN because it's hitting that port, it's going to be the ultimate destination. And then the destination network on there is going to be the actual interface that it is hitting or the IP address that it's going to be hitting on that particular interface. Then we're going to select the service that we're going to be accepting from there. This is going to be my HTTPS rule. So this is going to set up the firewall rule to allow any traffic from the WAN on any IP address coming into my LAN that hits my port E2, my external WAN IP address on there using port 443. Now at this point, you do not and cannot use this linked NAT rule. This will not create correctly. So it's not an option to utilize this for uh, inbound firewall rules. So again, just ignore that, do not utilize that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna create an inbound HTTPS NAT rule. So you can see here, I've got my NAT rule for inbound. I can see my original source on there. So the original source of where it's coming from is going to be any. The destination of where it's going, so this is going to be the destination of where that traffic, so the original destination of where that traffic's hitting is going to be my port E2. It's hitting the actual firewall. And where is the original service for that? So the original service that's coming in and is being requested on there is that HTTPS. 
Now, at this point in time, we don't want to do any source NAT translations on there, so we want to leave that as original. We are not going to be translating the source of where it came from. What we're going to be translating is the destination of where it is going to. So we're going to want to go into that DNAT section on there. And in this case, we're going to select my web server, which is my Synology NAS, and we're going to have traffic sent over to that device. Now, if I needed to, I could also come in and do a port address translation. Maybe we're accepting it on 443, but that web server is running on 444. I could also add in a translated service. I can do a port address translation, taking it from that 443 to a 444 or any other port that I want that is being presented on that actual web server. For the matching criteria, uh, again, you can leave this as any any if you want, because you have that destination in there. If you want, you can also go in. I know this is only going to be coming in through that Frontier Internet connection, so I can go ahead and add that as an inbound interface on there. Again, you want to leave your outbound interface as any. So this is how you would go through and set up an inbound NAT rule for that firewall rule. And I do recommend if you are doing these manually that you leave the names, uh, you can have the name associated with it uh, so that it actually you know, it mentions something as far as, you know, we're doing inbound HTTPS on the firewall rule. This is my inbound HTTPS here. Or if it's got the web server's name on there, make sure the name on here all and the description also has information about that so you know which one this matches up against. So, at that point, we're at the end of the presentation here. Thanks for sticking around with us. If there's any additional questions, happy to answer those. Uh, if not, hope you guys have a great day. Travis, anything else in here before we uh, wrap this up? That's a big negative, sir. I think uh, that answered everything, and um, I appreciate all your time and everyone else's time on the call. Um, any, oh, yeah, just a lot of uh, thank yous coming through, Steve. So, yeah, I do appreciate it. All right, perfect. Yeah, this was recorded, so we will get this uh, recording uh, sent out to you as well. So if you have anybody else on your team uh, that wants to go through this or you think it might be beneficial for, you can absolutely do that. Uh, and you can also go back through those any of the sections that you want on there uh, and take your time running through them. I uh, hope this was helpful. If you guys want to see more content like this, you know, we're going to try to do this, you know, either every month or every other month with uh, different components that we have available. Uh, maybe the next one we'll do is a deeper dive into the SOFO Central firewall reporting uh, once we get into our uh, premium offering. With that, guys, I hope everybody has a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.